Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. And as we are starting off a brand new work week, let's get right over to the forecast with meteorologist Thomas Patrick, because Thomas, you're telling us we're going to have some pretty nice weather. Yeah, just going to be overall nice throughout the course of this week. I mean, how does 70 to 80 degrees sound for September? The official last week of summer, honestly, pretty good overall. Even our low temperatures, pretty comfortable enough. This is usually the time of year where we can start to see a lot more 40s on the map, especially in our normal cool spots like out of Deer Park and Sandpoint. Not even the case there this morning. It's 51 and 54 degrees respectively and 53 in both Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. So cool, but not terribly cold. A little bit of cloud cover has something to say about that. And while this is starting to build in from the south, well, there's not really much rain out of this. It might sprinkle in some of these areas this morning, but overall I'm not expecting more rain until tomorrow afternoon. And I'll show you the storm system responsible for that. In the meantime, just enjoying another warm one for today. As you wake up this morning, we want to help you prepare for your morning commute. We're taking a live look at I-90 and Arthur. This is in Spokane Valley. You can see traffic is moving nice and smoothly. On Up With Krem, we bring you weather and traffic together every 30 minutes. We show you live pictures of conditions so you know what you can expect before you head out the door. Well, speaking of traffic, we do have a traffic alert for you as you're starting off your work week. A three day closure begins this morning on Freya Street at the North Spokane Corridor. Creme T's Brandon T. Jones live for us at that location. Brandon, you're helping drivers get around this. What should they know? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. And actually, yeah, crews have already gone out and placed up some of this signage to block off the road. And you may have been able to just hear one of the trucks that have turned around. We've seen at least 20 to possibly 30 different cars and trucks kind of come up to this closure and turn around. You can hear some of that beeping. That's a truck moving back and going around now as well. So a lot of people, it looks like, have been caught off guard by this. Crews have been out, as mentioned. The closure officially going into place at 5 a.m. as of this morning. Washa says they're closing the south roundabout along with the northbound off ramp from the north Spokane corridor to North Freya Street. And there are two roundabouts on North Freya Street just north of East Francis Avenue that make up the interchange with the North Spokane corridor. So it can get a little bit confusing, but during the closure, crews will be applying permanent striping and there will not be access to on ramp northbound to the North Spokane corridor. This closure will remain in place until Wednesday. Another quick note on construction season. The city of Spokane will continue work today on Market Street. Officials are asking that if you travel through the area to use Division or the Hamilton Nevada corridor. Crews will be paving tonight and Tuesday evening. And with any of the construction season updates that we've provided for you, just always remember maybe get out of the house a little bit earlier. You can hear another truck turning around right here at this particular roundabout. And again, give yourself a little bit of time to get around all of these detours that are in place. But for now, reporting live here in Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crim 2 News. This morning, the FBI is still investigating what appears to have been a second assassination attempt against former President Donald Trump. The incident happened yesterday at Trump's golf club in West Palm Beach, Florida. Christian Benavides has the latest from the scene. The FBI says it arrested a man after Secret Service agents saw the muzzle of an AK-47 style rifle pointing toward President Trump through shrubbery while he was golfing Sunday at his golf club in West Palm Beach. Our agents engaged. Uh, we are not sure right now if the individual was able to take a shot at our agents. A witness reported the suspect's license plate numbers to police. Within minutes, the FBI took him into custody without incident in a neighboring county. Officials say the suspect left a rifle, a scope, and two backpacks when he fled. And there was also a GoPro on the fence there where he was uh, intent on uh, filming what was going on. The suspect is identified as 58-year-old Ryan Wesley Ruth, a former North Carolina resident now living in Hawaii. He is seen here in a 2023 interview with the news organization Semaphore discussing the war in Ukraine. CBS News has learned the suspect has a criminal record and had personally been recruiting soldiers to fight in the war against Russia. He reportedly supported Trump in 2016, but at some point switched his allegiance. The Palm Beach County Sheriff says the suspect managed to get fairly close to the former president. Between three and 500 yards, but with a rifle and a scope like that, that's not a long distance. 
It was only nine weeks ago that Trump survived another attempt on his life during a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. He escaped with an ear injury. The suspect in that case was killed by the Secret Service. The suspect in Sunday's incident now faces federal charges. Trump wrote in a fundraising text, My resolve is stronger after another attempt on my life. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, West Palm Beach, Florida. Now, in a statement made to X last night, President Joe Biden said he's relieved former President Trump is unharmed. The president also said, I commend the work of the Secret Service and their law enforcement partners for their vigilance and their efforts to keep the former president and those around him safe. Vice President Kamala Harris also shared a statement on social media saying she's glad the former president is safe. She also said in part, quote, I am deeply disturbed by the possible assassination attempt of former President Trump today. As we gather the facts, I will be clear, I condemn political violence. We all must do our part to ensure that this incident does not lead to more violence, end quote. We take another look at our weather forecast. I'm going to start with the big picture West Coast view here and our storm system we're watching is over California and Nevada. You can actually see a bit of some disorganized rain showers around the Intermountain West region. This is going to be heading towards Montana in the next 24 to 36 hours, but it will be close enough to give us some rain showers by tomorrow. Today, though, an actually very warm day overall, much warmer than yesterday, up to 79 in Spokane, almost 80 degrees, and there will be some 80s in central Washington for today. Again, no rain chances just yet, but a little bit of cloud cover might linger across the region. And there are those 80s up to 83, 84 degrees for the central part of the state and still in the mid to upper 70s, even for North Idaho, making this likely one of our warmest days of the week. After almost two years in Moscow, Brian Koberger, the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students, is now out of Latak County. This morning, Crim 2's Connor McAvoy reports on his move to Ada County. The change of venue comes after a judge stated Koberger's more likely to receive a fair trial in Ada County than in Latak County due to extensive media coverage and Ada County having more resources. Our sister station in Boise confirmed his arrival at the Pullman Moscow Airport as well as at the Ada County Jail. This relocation is something Koberger's defense teams fought for, expressing concern that an impartial jury wouldn't be possible in Latak County. Prosecutors opposed the switch, saying the change of location creates an inconvenience of enforcing attorneys, witnesses, and families of the victims to travel to a different area. I spoke with former Idaho Attorney General David Leroy about the cost and overall logistics in relocating all parties involved, and he says it's the responsibility of the former and current trial location. Ada County uh, will contribute in some sense uh, the site and some security personnel. There may be something about which uh, the county here incurs an expense that they ask for reimbursement uh, by Latok County. But for the most part, this will be a collaboration between the two counties. Leroy also says the trial will be continuing from where it was last left in Latok County under 4th District Judge Stephen Hippler. Koberger will remain in the Ada County Jail until his trial that is scheduled for June of 2025. Koberger's initial arrest in 2022 occurred six weeks after the killings. The prosecution is seeking the death penalty if he is found guilty of the murders. In studio, Connor McAvoy, Creme 2 News.